Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's K Gibbs GP here and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 6 on the channel. Now it's been a quiet week for the channel, I have been suffering from man flu and my voice has been decidedly second hand which has made commentating a challenge indeed. But we're back in business now, we're back with a race at Abu Dhabi in the Ford FGX Falcon. It's one for you V8 supercar fans out there, as the lights go out and away we go in this instance. We've got a terrible start and we've got cars coming at us left, right and centre. This guy's tried to turn in us there. We've been hit into turn one as well. That'll serve me right for being cautious. Someone wasn't being cautious there as someone's been nerfed off at turn one. It's a bad day for him. But we're somehow still in P10. We're going to try and get the cut back on lots of guys here. But we've been hung out to dry on the outside. Never good being on the outside of a corner like that at turn one. You're often going to get pushed wide. Inexplicably though, we're still in P10. There's some people that are even worse turn ones than we have somehow and we've been pushed wide by that Aston who was on a march there he was coming through no matter what the contact counter must be up to about 15 already in this race as the Aston put lays down some rubber on traction coming out of there I've got no idea what the corner numbers are on this configuration of circuits I'm flying blind somewhat here as we get on the brakes at the 100 meter board going into this hairpin and the major heavy braking zones on this particular track We've got the car stopped nicely in this instance. So, the next car ahead is the Aston Martin. The yellow Aston for that matter, so nice and easy to see, even in the Abu Dhabi night. As we now head into the second heavy braking zone at the 100 meter board, the Aston's a bit out of shape, you can see, getting a bit of a wiggle on, on the exit there. A couple of cars have gone wide. P7's rejoined right in front of us there, giving us absolutely nowhere to go, which is, which is not good for us, but unfortunately we didn't lose any positions because of it. We've had a KTM that's come flying up our inside from absolutely nowhere. Don't know where he's come from, but he's got the position back now anyway, as we try and get the cut back, back on him. So we're now actually back up into P7, as a McLaren's made up his own track on the exit there. We've gone a little bit wide as well, getting over the curb, which hasn't helped us. The KTM's pushing us round there, trying to push us wide. Still hasn't got the position back. He's pushed us wide for the second corner in a row, and that's put him now firmly up our inside, but that's gonna give us the inside ball up an ultimate corner so we actually retain p7 in this instance from the ktm who's looking particularly aggressive behind me down the inside again forcing me wide again that's three times in four corners so he definitely wants to get past me he's probably going to have better acceleration and straight line speed as well and that's actually worked out well for him he's made the, made the move stick night vision unlocked drive complete 50 laps at night in multiplayer i'm sure the the previous 49 were much better than this one because this one's been a bit of a shamble so far. Somehow still in P8 though, inexplicably. As we now head through sector one, a couple of cars off there. We had a McLaren and an Audi R8, I believe, off there as I've made a complete hash of that corner. Didn't know where the turning point was and turned in about a year too early. So we've got plenty of action up ahead, plenty of action in behind, but we're trying to hold on to P8 at the moment. We're doing, doing a fairly good job at the, for now, at least holding on to position. Uh, in what is pretty a pretty hectic race. As several cars have gone wide again there. Um, we've got the Audi, the KTM and the McLaren all up ahead. It's getting very tight as we exit the corner. The McLaren's just about stayed ahead of us. Somehow we're in P6 as the KTM's now somehow behind us. Not quite sure how that happened. Answers on a postcard, please. As we're still in P6, this KTM, is he gonna hit us into this corner? Of course he is. He's hit us pretty much every other corner he's been behind us on. So he still likes to contact, he's on our outside here as well, which is surprising given that we're actually on the far extreme right of the track. Uh, a bit of track extending never hurt anybody, did it? And uh, someone certainly, the, the McLaren certainly got the net, not got the memo about track limits as he's gone wide once again. Gets fantastic drive off of the corner unsurprisingly and makes up lots of time on us there. But we will not rise to it. We will not track extend as the uh, Audi is now the guy next in line for an overtake in p5 whether i'm going to be able to get him or not i'm not sure because he's got pretty good pace particularly when he track extends like that it's not going to give me a chance so now he goes through the final corner but he's gone a bit wide the mclaren's gone even wider he's come to grief in the barriers serves him right for the track extending he's now trying to put us in the wall it's a tight squeeze as we head down into turn one it's schumacher and barrack los from hungary 2010 but uh, we get away with it this time and, and the McLarens got away with it. He's on the outside of turn one. 
in P4 now. We're in P5, so we've actually made up more ground. The two McLarens come together there. I believe that was Drastic Midget in the green McLaren. And he's been absolutely barreled out of the way by the orange McLaren. We've been barreled out of the way now as well and lost about 20 positions there as so many cars go through. It's the final lap of the race and I didn't realise I had quite this many cars around me all battling for position. And this is all a, fa all a battle for, for P4 and 5 as there's cones flying everywhere. I think that sums up what this last lap's going to be like. We've been overtaken on the straight by a couple of cars as our straight line speed is rather poor. Everybody's looking for the same bit of track here. There's a bit of contact between two cars. One car round. Everybody's coming off the exit as well at the same time. The Audi's out. The Audi has spun out. We've got P5 ahead of us now. We've somehow made up about three or four positions in the space of a couple of corners there. And so now we've got cars again coming at us down this straight. We just don't have the straight line speed as we get under braking at the 100 metre board. Somebody's been absolutely nerfed there by Drastic Midget. <laughs> bad day for him he's found himself on the outside we've been stuck behind drastic midget as well as it goes sideways in the middle of the road there so that's cost us plenty of time and positions we're down in p8 p7 now as the mclaren was once again wide and you can see in the rear view drastic midget still having a go at us he's down the inside he's forced his way through he's absolutely on a mission at the moment as the mclaren goes around our outside trying to track extend again he's been nerfed again by drastic midget drastic midget barreling his way past everybody today and allowing us to come through the parting of the wave somewhat as he, he barrels people out of the way so we've somehow made it back up into P7 after all that absolute carnage here in Abu Dhabi largely instigated by the green McLaren but just a, a, a classic classic bit of multiplayer on Forza Motorsport 6 there a fun race if not the cleanest racing you'll ever see uh, as it's P7 for us after all of that carnage, I feel like I need to lay down after that one. That was that was pretty intense. So two minutes, two point seven, our best lap time. Ultimately, I feel I could shave about twenty seconds off of that in a usual race. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this return to Forza Motorsport Six. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. But for now, at least, folks, I shall see you next time.